Okay, you and Harrell, you guys got married. Were you guys married when you both got arrested or you got married while in prison? Um, no. Uh, me and Harrell were uh, married at the time of um, the expedite, or the, the time that they came and got us from um, Oklahoma. We were married. Okay. Now, when you guys got married... Whose idea was it to get married? Was it his? Was it, was it yours? What was it? It was uh, Harrell's. Because I, I didn't want to get married. I always said that um, when I get married, it's going to be forever. And um, so I never wanted no divorce behind my name. And, um, yeah, he, he forced me to marry him. He was on some uh, charges for um, in uh, uh, Oklahoma for shooting the uh, individual in the face. And so he called me and said that I guess he heard up there that if you get married, you get less of time. But later on in my um, in my stay at Jackson County Jail, did I learn the truth that um, he married me so that if we ever were to get caught, that um, I wouldn't, by law, have to testify against him. Okay, so basically Harrell had all this planned out. And what he wanted to do and how he was going to do things because he was trying to think ahead of the law. That's what he was trying to do. Yes. Okay. Even when we, even when we got arrested and, I mean, the truth was out, he uh, wrote uh, me uh, threatening letters. He wrote me letters telling me to change my story and say that some dude named Mike Mike um, came and got Erica and... Uh, and took her, and he paid her thirty dollars. And I gave that uh, letter to my attorney, who gave it to the prosecutor, who then uh, Kansas City Star printed that article, you know, out about how uh, he tried to cahoots me into telling a whole different story. Okay. You know, and he kept stating that we're married; they cannot um, make us testify against each other. We're married; they don't have no evidence. Um, they can't charge us with nothing. They're trying to turn us against each other. Um, don't believe anything um, that they say because they're lying and they just don't want to see us together and, and all this, all this crazy stuff. And, and, and to be and, and, and to be honest, I was believing in it. I mean, this is all I knew. So it took my lawyer to show me because if he told me that the sky was purple. I, it, to me, this guy was purple. And my lawyer is the one who told me that um, Harrell was against me. And it took him to show me his interview where I can see where the detectives is trying to throw a loop or, or say my uh, say Erica's name. And he'll say, no, um, my name. So he uh, so he was always telling me to, to change my story, to say this, to, you know, and... and this call is from a correctional facility and may be monitored and recorded. When my lawyer sold me that video, that's when I was like, um, this, you know what I'm saying? I, nothing that he say to me anymore. You know, like, hey, now you got your protection. Now you say, and let's, let's lay Erica to rest. And, and that's what I did with then. Um, I, I, do I feel, I feel like the time that I'm doing is worth, you know, is worth it because that was my child and I didn't protect her. Um, but I, uh, I was never, ever going to um, not tell the truth what happened. So once I knew that I was safe from day one, I mean, you can w go back and it, my story is never, and it will not never change. Now here's, now, here's something else I wanted to ask you, right? Now, mm -hmm. I remember when you were saying that the Army guy, you, you, you was talking about the, the, the story where he went on the news, he called the news and everything was live. The gentleman that found Erica's head... They said Erica came to him and, yes. and said she needed his help and told her where yes. the head was. And he found it and it was on the news. What was yes. Harrell's reaction? Did he see that on the news with you? or I was I I didn't even see it yet because I was working at Price Cutters. Okay. He called me at work and told me they found it. And I said... Thank God. He said, what did you just say? And I said, no, I was, I was talking to a customer, but I, was, I wasn't talking to a customer. I was relieved that they found it because now they, can, now they will know who she is. Mm -hmm. So 
he told me to leave work and get there, get to the house now. So when I got there, that's when I uh, it was still going on with the uh, news crew and, and the man was still there. And I walked down there and I was observing um, what was going on and, and him being questioned by the police and, and handcuffed and, and all this. Mm. While this was going on, did, at any time did you want to say he's not the guy or what was... what yes. was? Okay. Yes, I did. I, I, I did. I even called the uh, 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 police station and said he's not the one. He's not. He's not who you're looking for. And I hung up. Right. Okay. Now, I understand through all this, there was a bright light at the end of the tunnel for you. You met a young lady, and she she's your fiance. Yes. How did you meet your fiance and? Tell me about that. She's, a, she's, she's amazing. She is so amazing. Um, and, and, and here, when I first got locked up, um, I uh, I was in a lot of, you know, I've been in, I've been locked up 17 years, so I've probably been in like three real, um, three relationships. And I find myself going through the same thing with the three, like I was allowing them to um, belittle me, you know, um, throw my case in my face, you know, call me baby killer. I mean, just kind of like what Harrell was doing, because Harrell didn't um, abuse me as much as he physically and mentally, you know, um, abused me. Like, I would rather to have been beat than to uh, say the things that he uh, said to me or do to me. And so that's what these, uh, the three other relationships I was in, that's what they would do. And I, I met her and I seen her and she just was like, everybody's not against you. Keep your head up, you know. You know, ask God for forgiveness. Forgive yourself, and, and you know, quit beating yourself over because you can't change the um, past as much as you want to. You can't, and that I can make sure that what happened in the past didn't happen in the uh, in the future. So it finally felt good to finally meet somebody who who generally cared about me, like really, you know, um, understood what I what what, what I was going through. Mm. Wow. So, yes. okay. No John Mental, no throwing up my case. I mean, she'll she'll get into it with other uh, women. You know, they say something about my case, and then she was like, "You don't know her. You don't know what she went through. You don't you don't know um, her shoes. You know, put you know, you ain't walked in her shoes. So who are you to judge?" Okay. Well, we we're gonna save that because your fiance is going to take part in an upcoming interview along with your children. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Now that's going to be amazing. And I want the, the, the audience to realize and understand that, you know, your family is still supporting you. They're with you. They don't forgave you. And everything is everything. The love still there is unconditional. This call is from a correctional facility and may be monitored and recorded. And, and that, and that's all that matter. Anybody else, doesn't matter. Now, it's one, it's one thing I have to ask you. Yes, sir. Another podcaster reached out to you and tried to, you know, blackmail you or just, you know, or, you know, to if you don't do the story, Harrell would do the story. Could yes, you, sir. Could you tell us about that podcaster? Yes, you, uh, mm-hmm. yes, I can. His his name was uh, Andrew Dodge. And he called me, and it, and it was weird because he just popped up in my email. So I called him, and he was like, uh, you know, I, I feel like you um, you was done injustice, and um, i like to get your story out there. And in my spirit, um, I didn't feel like he was right. It was just something about his spirit. And so he uh, offered money and said, well, we'll pay you this much and then you know my audience will see it and then you'll get money it's just something about him so my friend in here who uh um was on a a, a, a tv show and uh i was going through her because we have tablets in here and i was going through her tablets and i seen his name and i said you he he came to you too and she was like yeah something's wrong with him he's weird and so when I called him, and he was like, so are you ready to do the pro- uh, uh, podcast? I said, I don't feel comfortable. 
I don't I don't feel comfortable yet. I have to continue to pray. And then he says, well, it's okay if you don't. Because, you have one minute left. He said, it's okay if you don't because Harrell uh, said he would. And I said, well, go to Harrell then and have a nice day and don't ever get in contact with me again because you're not going to threaten me with him. And I'm already, he already then took something precious from me. So here you go threatening me with the, mo- the, the the person who took my daughter and then going to tell me, well, I'm going to get it one way or the other. Wow, that's messed up on his behalf. Yeah. And, um, well, you're dealing with the real over here, so you ain't even got to worry about that. So with that being said, that's why when when uh, you contact me um, and I and I, 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 I like the way that you word, first of all, how you word, your introduction with me and then when I call you made me feel like I was uh, and, and loved and, and everybody won against me and all I ever wanted was to get for somebody to oppress me to want not oppress me but be genuine not twist my words not make me like a monster not I, and and I just I I wanted somebody to allow me to tell the truth Allow me to tell you what the police don't know, what the police did, what they didn't do. And and with him, it was more about, I just need this story, no matter who if who tells me. And it was about his rating. Uh, I only got so many people, and that this story w- would have made it be so powerful that he would have had more. And to me, it wasn't about helping any other Michelles and Erica's. It was more about, uh, once again, making money off of my daughter. Right. I'm just going to keep it real. It was just about, to me, like he's another one of those ones that it wasn't about helping somebody. It was about what he could get out of, get out of this story. How would it benefit him? Okay. And and that's that's wrong because um people like that give other podcasters bad names. And this is why, like, yes. when I reach out to the inmates, how I came to you, I was not. I just introduced myself. Real. Mm-hmm. You was and 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 I and I, I I'm not just trying to say this because you you doing this you made me feel comfortable you made me feel like no one is more less or better than me we're all sinners and I and and when I say that I prayed and went to sleep that night and I felt the Holy Spirit over me telling me that you're the one all I can do is just start thanking them and ever since then I've called you and that and, and let's do this. Let's get this. And from day one, you've been on it. You've been on it. And 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 I just thank God, thank God that He put you in this in my path for this to be told and told right. 